If you want to skip past being a new player in Hawk, I've got just the things for you here. How's it going, everybody? My name is Magneti. Welcome to the Mothership, your go-to space for Hawked content. Now, my 10 tips for becoming a much better player at Hawked, all of these tips are not in any specific order, except for maybe tip number one. That one is actually gonna be probably my number one tip. So starting off with tip number 10, it's gonna sound kind of simple, but knowing the guns. There's energy versus kinetic weapons, which actually, contrary to a potentially popular belief, does not have any difference in damage against shields or versus non-shielded opponents. The damage is different from energy to kinetic weapons. However, it's different across the board for all weapons in general. There's rifles, DMRs, pistols, SMGs, sniper rifles, LMGs, the traverser slingshot, shotguns, grenades, and special weapons. Now, also, weapon rarity doesn't necessarily equate to more damage or necessarily mean that it's better. It sort of means that it's better for the most part, but not exactly. There are certain weapons that do different things. For example, the double barrel energy SMG shoots two shots. It's kind of like a double barrel shotgun, but you shoot both of them kind of at the same time within quick succession. It's like a burst fire SMG. Then each individual shot does eight damage. So you have the potential of doing 16 damage, but if you miss a shot, you only do eight, whereas the blue rated SMG that's kinetic weapon energy, it's not an energy weapon, it's kinetic actual ammunition, you have a lot of recoil and it shoots really fast, but it has a lot more damage potential within a short period of time. Hopefully that all makes sense. Basically, weapon rarity does not always mean that it's better. Now, this is where the tip comes in, is explaining briefly my personal preferences, which are going to be what I prefer to use is DMRs or snipers, as well as rifles or SMGs. Now, there is a difference between what I prefer to use, which guns are actually better, and which guns I am better with. Now, I personally believe that I'm better with rifles and SMGs, like assault rifles, so I should never use a sniper. But I enjoy using snipers and it's fun. I just suck using them. Now, the guns that are actually better, in my opinion, just to name a couple off the top of my head, are going to be the Zed assault rifle, the Zed 92, I believe is what it's called. Forgive me, I can't remember all the names of all the weapons, but the blue SMG that kind of looks like the Vector from Call of Duty, that is also a very good SMG. Now, personally for me, I prefer the energy sniper rifles over the kinetic sniper rifles. But again, this is something that you're going to need to figure out for yourself which weapons you are best with, not the ones that are the best or to be considered the best. You can definitely learn how to use those, but for the time being, just try to find the guns that you work well with and slowly work yourself up to using those meta type guns and getting better with those gradually as you play. Tip number nine is going to be talking about boosters. So using boosters. Now, boosters will get lost if you don't extract back to the Rift Wake, which is like the main hub. So if you die in a match and you don't come back to the Rift Wake, or even if you extract an artifact and some relics and some trinkets, but you don't escape, you will not get your boosters back. So that is a critical point to know. And if you don't know what boosters are, that is okay. They are basically just little comic book things that you can put into your loadout that give you different special bonus percentages towards different things. There's something that you can unlock in the Grail shop after a certain amount of loyalty. However, I will say that you should wait until level eight loyalty to buy into the boosters because it's just going to just save your money for the time being. It's not going to help you a ton in the very early beginning. You can definitely fiddle with them a little bit if you want, but my advice is that the best ones are later on. So once you get to level eight loyalty, you'll have all the boosters unlocked and you can run four blue rare rarity boosters. So I I just mentioned that you can have up to four boosters equipped all at once, so choose wisely. You know, again, kind of learn what works best for you, just like your weapons, but also try and keep an eye out for what is meta at the time. Tip number eight, moving into gears and exos, trying to stick with the common category here as we go throughout. Now, there is a good handful of different gear and exos out there. You know, you've got the kickback coin, you've got the recon raptor, you've got the boom box, you've got the electric guitar thingamajig, you've got the traditional heal potion thing and the zap firefly bugs, you know, whatever. There's a lot of them out there. Now, something that's going to be really important is if you are playing solo versus 
trio, you are going to want to swap out your gear and exos if you are playing solo and you were just playing trios or vice versa. You want to make sure that you and your teammates have complementary gear and exos if you're playing with a full trio of friends. If you're not, then obviously you just kind of roll with what works best for you if you're playing with randoms, but you want to make sure you try your best to align yourself with what you're playing with. So for example, the kickback coin in solos, at least in my personal experience, has not really been that great because you don't have a team to kind of aggro the other player so that you could get a potential flank and shoot around cover with the kickback coin. So you might want to just use gelatinium instead, have that gelatinum wall, whatever the hell it's called. I will note that exos are much more offensive, generally speaking, and wards are much more defensive, generally speaking. Now, when it comes to my personal preferences for exos, I prefer the kickback coin, the recon raptor, and the gelatinum wall thing. And for wards, I prefer the boombox. I have not messed around with really any other wards, but the echo pulse does seem kind of useful, but I haven't tested it out yet. And one other thing about gear and exos is that you can upgrade it. This is something that I didn't even know right away, and it took me a little while to learn this. You can upgrade your gear and exo from common to uncommon, all the way up to legendary. So that is another useful thing to know about exo, exos and wards, rather. Tip number seven, your artifacts loadout. Now, again, rolling into that same category of kind of gear, loadout, equipment, that type of stuff, you're gonna wanna try out different artifacts and determine which are best suited for your gameplay style. Now, of course, just like the previous topics we've been talking about, there are gonna be ones that are more meta style-ish that do a lot better, and there are gonna be some that aren't quite as good. Make sure you are upgrading your artifacts that you use a lot and enjoy and sell or deconstruct the artifacts that you don't. But there is one caveat, do not sell or deconstruct artifacts that you feel as though you might use later or want to try out later. Quick and simple, rolling into tip number six here. This kind of ties in with tip number seven, selling trinkets, relics, and artifacts. Now you're gonna want to deconstruct relics and artifacts and sell trinkets. Now really the only difference between relics and trinkets is that relics are higher rarity trinkets. They're basically the same thing. And if I'm wrong about that, please go ahead and correct me down in the comments below. Now, the difference between selling and deconstructing, if you don't already know, selling will give you hawk coins and deconstructing will give you that other purple square coin thing. And now you need both to upgrade your artifacts. So you're going to want to deconstruct everything you can that you don't want all the time and then just sell the cheaper trinkets. This will help you so much along the way in upgrading your artifacts that you really enjoy using. If you found any of these tips useful so far, go ahead and drop a sub down below so you can stay tuned to the rest of my tips and tricks and news and updates videos that I'm going to be making for Hawked in the future. I do plan on going much deeper into much more advanced things on how to, you know, different tips and playthroughs and such, critiquing gameplay onto how to become a better player in Hawked, as well as I plan on making a how to win series. So if that sounds something that you'd be interested in, go ahead and drop a sub down below. Straight into tip five here, how to extract relics, trinkets, and artifacts. Now this might seem kind of basic, Basic, but I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed in here. So obviously, if you don't already know, the process of getting an artifact is fairly simple. You've got caravans or the treasure room. In order to unlock the treasure room, you need to get five glyphs. And then once you get five glyphs uncovered and discovered and collected, you go to the treasure room, which will then be displayed to you on your map. Do not try to go to any random treasure room and guess the code because it will give you a semi-correct guess, but it will never be fully correct because you're probably not at the right treasure room. Moving on. Once you get five glyphs, go to the treasure room, put the code in with your slingshot, preferably, you know, however you want to do it. And then there you go. You got the artifact as well as some other stuff there. You just got to get to a extraction point and extract it. Now, what I want to get detailed about is a couple things here. So one, when you go to stand over the extraction pad, obviously it takes time to gain control of the extraction point until it is fully yours. But once you do, your stuff is automatically extracted for you. So you don't need to leave to extract your stuff. Now, if you did not know that, drop a thumbs up for me because that is like a huge thing. I've been running into players not knowing that you can extract without leaving. And, you know, obviously Hawked is a little different, so you don't get to keep your guns or anything like that. But all of your relics, trinkets and artifacts all get extracted once you have completely taken control of that extraction point. And now the kicker here, which I'll get into later, is that you can continue to play after that. Now, obviously, there's caravans, too, which are another way to get artifacts. I'm not going to dig too deep into those. It's fairly simple. You just go up to the caravan, shoot the chests on the side towards the middle of the monster, shoot 
shoot those little blue diamonds on the side there. You can only shoot one of those per time before he sprints and you'll have to wait until he's done sprinting. And then he'll have three more on each side on the bottom towards his knee area, I guess, or it, I'm not really sure. And so you can shoot any amount of those no matter what, if he's running or whatnot. So if you have good aim, go ahead and do that. And then once it has its armor off, you can shoot its back. And once it's dead, you can collect the artifact from the chest as well as a legendary power up thing. I don't remember what those are called, but you get like a nice little booster thingamajig. Tip number four here, combat movement. Movement is king and hawked. If you haven't already noticed this, I would be amazed unless you've only played like one or two matches, but players are like fish. They just fucking flop around everywhere and are hard to hit no matter fucking what, unless you're just fighting a bot and finding a balance between moving a lot and staying accurate with your shots is going to be very, very important in winning gunfights, especially when you're up close. Knowing when not to move is also just as important. Like I was saying, for example, I was watching Shroud's stream, which was a hashtag ad, and he exterminated by himself with half health a full trio group just by moving forward and back up a set of stairs on a bridge. And that was really keen in my mind to knowing like, okay, knowing when not to move is just as important. So keep that in mind play around with that in the firing range, you know, or in just live matches, you know, just try and chill back, try and learn the mechanics and do it that way. Tip number three, locomotion. Now moving again into these different categories, I like to organize it this way. Let me know if you enjoy that. So locomotion, another movement tip here. If you haven't noticed, there is a lot of traversal in the game. You can sprint, you can slide jump, you can infinite slide, you can use your traverser to latch onto different points and grapple and like all these different things. So I'd like to give just a quick display while I'm talking about this of the different types that there are. You can also even use your traverser while you're on your hoverboard thing, surfboard, whatever it is. I do want to talk about the infinite slide specifically now. This might not be exactly what you think it might be, but this is just what I call it. Keep in mind, if you are going downhill, just slide. Don't run, just slide, because you will infinite slide all the way to the bottom. Caveat, that is not cancelable. So once you start, you're committed all the way down. There is no stopping. So keep that in mind. If you're going downhill and there's gear on the middle of the hill, try not to slide until you get to the gear so you can check it out. Now, something that's really great about locomotion here is stamina management, and you have pulsing mushrooms, edible mushrooms, the boom box, and slide jumping to help you manage your stamina. Keep in mind that dodging using the control key will use half your stamina, and you need 50% to do a single dodge. Walking backwards and pushing space will give you a backwards kind of cartwheel jump thing that you can use instead of a roll. Keep that in mind. And I was mentioning pulsing mushrooms, edible mushrooms, the boom box, and slide jumping. All of those are different ways that you can help manage your stamina. Pulsing mushrooms, make sure you run into those because it gives you infinite stamina for a short period of time and slightly increases your boost speed. You have edible mushrooms, which do the exact same thing. You have the boom box, which also does the exact same thing. And then of course the slide jump is personally my favorite way to help manage my stamina and sprint for the longest amount of time. One more thing is that there is a artifact, the lizard looking artifact, that gives you a speed boost and a stamina use reduction, depending on the level, when you don't have your weapons equipped. So push and hold your weapon switch key and that will put your weapons away and take out your traverser and that way you will get that full effect from that artifact. Keep that in mind. That's a huge thing too. Tip number two, we got one more after this. Utilizing your slingshot for stealth. This is something I see a lot of random players not doing. If you want to be good and you want to avoid getting into a fight before you're ready or being surprised by another player, you need to use your slingshot and the melee mechanics when you're fighting NPCs and solving glyph puzzles. Okay, if you're not doing this, you are in the wrong completely, and I'm sorry to say it, but you kind of suck. Now, I will admit this is very difficult to execute with a random trios or even like a single random in your group is probably going to ruin this. But if you're playing solos and you don't want to get surprised by somebody because they hear you shooting trying to solve a glyph puzzle, do not use your guns. Use your traverser slingshot, okay? It does put you at a slight disadvantage when somebody comes up behind you if they do happen to stumble upon you because then you have to switch your gun. However, it is much more quiet. Especially when you're fighting NPCs, you can just shoot them with your slingshot, make no noise, or melee them, and it's perfect. Alright, let's do a quick review, okay? I'm just gonna brisk over real quick 
Tip 10, we talked about knowing the guns and picking the right ones. Tip 9, we talked about boosters. 8, we talked about gear and exos. 7, we talked about your artifact loadout. 6, we talked about selling relics, trinkets, and artifacts. Number 5, we talked about how to extract relics and trinkets, as well as artifacts. Tip number 4, we talked about combat movement specifically. Tip number 3, we talked about locomotion. And tip number 2, we just talked about utilizing your slingshot. And now we have tip number 1, and then I have one bonus tip for you as well after that. Tip number one, extracting with more than one artifact. Look, this, I've talked to a good handful of people out there, and this kind of has blown their mind. So if you're pretty new to Hawked, you probably don't know this, but I was talking about earlier how when you go to an extraction point, you can extract without leaving, you can extract all your stuff and continue playing. Now, this is huge, 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 huge. If you're playing with a trios group and you happen to get a caravan artifact, you all are loaded up with relics and trinkets. You can go to an extraction point, extract all your stuff, and then you can go get the treasure room artifact or grief other players and get their artifact as well and their relics. The huge bonus to this is that you can extract with potentially up to four artifacts. Now that would be near impossible. You would have to somehow collect a caravan artifact simultaneously with two other trio groups doing that exactly at the same time. And then you would have to grief those teams, take their artifacts and extract and then or don't extract and then go to the treasure room, get that artifact and extract as well. Now, obviously, if you have three artifacts. I believe you can only carry one per person, so you would have to extract if you were able to grief the two other caravan groups, but then you would have the potential of getting four artifacts because you have the potential of having three caravans and one treasure room artifact spawn in one match. It does not always happen, but it does certainly happen. I've seen it multiple times. So that is a absolute huge tip. On top of that, if you go to a dig site or a geocache or whatnot in the game early on, shortly after you spawn, and you collect that and you get any type of relic or trinket, you can extract right away in the beginning of the game without leaving. You can extract that relic or trinket, leave all of your, like, leave the relic, like, drop the relic off and, and continue playing. Okay, huge, huge, huge tip. Last tip here, bonus tip. This is a pretty simple one, but if you speak with the Riftwake NPCs, you can get free loyalty points if you speak with them between matches. So it's not very much. However, it's that much less that you have to spend in Hawks in order to increase your loyalty and unlock more Grail items to buy in the shop. Well, that's it, everybody. If you found any of these tips useful, go ahead and drop a sub or a like down below if you don't want to stick around for more content, which I don't know why you wouldn't want to because I'm going to be making a ton of hawked content. But anyways, other than that, stick around for more Extraction Game news. We'll talk again real soon. Peace.